Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with complex numbers. Exponential equations are nice and fun to solve, but the ones that, that are with complex numbers are actually funner to solve, in my opinion. Again, that's my personal opinion. Please let me know what you think. So we have 2 plus i to the power x equals 2 plus 11i. So it's kind of like a funny relationship. You take a complex number and raise it to the power x, and then it's the same thing as adding 10i to the number. Okay, let's see how this all works out. So I'll try to present uh, two methods. Uh, the sh second method might be a little short, but I'll just give you the idea. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I want to do the following. I want to write both of these numbers in polar form. So if you think about 2 plus i, that can be written as basically the point 2 comma 1. And then you're going to get something like this. And let's call this angle theta. And this is going to be a 2 and this is going to be a 1. So we have a number whose modulus is root 5, because if you use the Pythagorean theorem on 2 comma 1, the hypotenuse would be root 5. And the theta is can actually can be found by using inverse tangent, but te tangent theta is going to be 1 half. So we can write theta equals 10 inverse of 1 half. Okay? Let's do the same thing for our uh, number on the right hand side, but this number has a really high uh, y value or imaginary part. So it's kind of like this, pretty much. But this time it's going to be obviously much, much bigger angle. This is 11. And then the, let's call this angle alpha. And we get that tangent alpha equals 11 over 2. So alpha can be written as 10 inverse of 11 halves. And the modulus for this, let's call this r sub 1 and let's call this r sub 2. And this is going to be the square root of 11 squared plus 2 squared, which is 125, and I can write it as 5 root 5, okay? So with all this information, I can go ahead and turn my numbers into polar form. Let's go ahead and do it. So when I do this polar form thing, I'm going to be basically keeping the right-hand side with principal value, I mean the left-hand side, as I write the right-hand side in more general form. I don't think I need parentheses here, do I? Let's go ahead and write it without 2 plus 11i. Okay. Now let's go ahead and write the 2 plus i as square root of 5 times e to the power i theta. As I said earlier, I'm just going to write the principal form for this because that's going to cover pretty much all the solutions. And as you can see here, theta is 10 inverse of 1 half, or you can also say arc tangent, but uh, I prefer 10 inverse. But anyways, let's leave the theta as theta. At the very end, we can write it if you want, okay? But at least you know what it is. Now, the modulus for this number is 5 root 5, remember? That's going to be multiplied by e to the power i alpha, but I want to read, I want to add, not read, multiples of 2 pi to it, so I can cover pretty much all the solutions. Make sense? So far, so good, hopefully. Now, we got this equation, which is nice because this is kind of exponential uh, with powers of e. Now we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides, right? So when you do natural log both sides, you're going to get the following, x, ln, this. And what we can do is we can actually write this as a sum, but let's go ahead and just ln both sides first and see what that looks like. And now we can go ahead and apply ln function to a product, and ln of a product is basically the sum of two lns. With the x on the outside, I'm just going to keep it like this and write this as ln root 5 plus ln e to the i theta is just going to be i theta. And this is going to be ln 5 root 5. And I could probably write these in parentheses both. And then plus ln e to e is 1, so it's just going to be i times alpha plus 2 and pi. Alrighty, so far so good. And now we're going to divide. And when you divide, you should get the general solution. But we'll talk about some specific solutions too. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by this. And now here's what happens. If n is equal to 0, you get the principal value. So that should be a valid solution, right? So if n is equal to 0, we get x equals ln root 5 plus i alpha divided by ln 5 
root, I'm sorry, th it, the top should be ln 5 root 5, ln 5 root 5 plus i alpha, and this is ln root 5 plus i theta. Now, 5 root 5 can be written as 5 root cubed, so this can be written as 3 ln root 5 plus i alpha divided by ln root 5 plus i theta. Now, what's the relationship between alpha and theta? And I'm thinking, if alpha is 3 times theta, then this would work super duper nice because I can factor out a 3 and cancel out, right? That would be awesome. And guess what? If you actually check it out with the inverse tangent, you're going to realize that alpha is exactly 3 times theta. Okay, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for the readers or the, for the audience. I know you, you, some people hate that word. I did when I was a student. Anyways, but that's the fact. You can check it out easily. So please do. And then uh, I can basically replace alpha with 3 theta. And then this gives us a super duper nice solution, which we can also verify with the second method. Okay? All right, great. So let's go ahead and see how we can simplify this. Oops, I forgot the i here. So now I can take out a 3, and that's going to give me ln root 5 plus i theta divided by ln root 5 plus i theta, and they beautifully cancel out, leaving us with a 3. Really? It was that simple? Well, that's how the problem was arranged, actually. That's how it got started. Okay, there's a story behind this, right? So x equals 3 works, but that's the principal solution. Again, obviously, if you add multiples of 2 and uh, 2 pi, so on and so forth, you know, uh, you're going to get all the sol solutions. So this is the general solution, and obviously, um, that should work in general. Now, why did x equals 3 work? Let's go ahead and take a look, and that brings us to the second method. So we have our numbers, right? What were the numbers? We have 2 plus i. We raise it to the power x, and that gives us 2 plus 11i, right? Okay, awesome. So now, here's the thing. For out of curiosity, I just raise this number to a power. So let's go ahead and square this number. And uh, you're like, why do you do that? Just for fun. If you square 2 plus i, you're going to get 4 plus 4i plus i squared. That's going to be... 3 plus 4i. Does that look familiar? 3, 4, 5 triangle? Hopefully it does. And then I want to multiply this. I want to raise 2 plus i to the third power. So it, in other words, I want to take the second power and multiply it by 2 plus i to the first, which is going to give me the cube, right? Because this is the square. So now I get 3, I mean 6 plus 3i plus 8i plus 4i squared, which is minus 4. 6 minus 4 is equal to 2, and this is 11i. And yes, I got the number on the right-hand side. Of course, this is not a coincidence. I already knew that. But guess what? Trial and error, sometimes you get a solution, right? So this means that 3 is a solution. x equals 3 is a solution, but this only gives you one of the solutions. But let me tell you how you can proceed with this. And then I'll leave it at that. So you now know that the right-hand side is 2 plus i to the third power. And then you can go ahead and write both numbers in polar form, which are going to have the same format, pretty much. But right-hand side, you want to write it in more general form. And then ln both sides, and you'll get the same x. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.